the very first thing we need to know about moment calculation is that moment is always calculated with respect to a certain axis, and therefore a force causes different moments about a different axis. In a 2D problem, it always looks like the force is creating a moment about a point, not about an axis. For example, in a 2D plane shown here, when a force is creating a moment about a point O, it is in fact creating a moment vector along the positive z axis, as shown in this side view demonstration. In the 2D plane, the moment vector cannot be visualized, but you can imagine it to be the head of an arrow shooting out of the plane, represented by a dot. The rotational effect is counterclockwise, and the magnitude of the moment is positive. If we reverse the direction of the force in this image, then intuitively we can tell the force is now creating a clockwise rotational effect about point O. However, the moment that the force creates now points towards the negative z direction, still following the right-hand rule. And although from the top view you see a clockwise rotational effect, it is still counterclockwise about the moment vector m z. So in a 2D plane, you should imagine the moment vector as an arrow shooting into the plane, and you can only see the tail of the arrow. Because of the negative z direction of the moment vector, it is called to create a negative moment. With that understood. When we calculate the moment caused by a force F about a point O in a 2D plane, if the force creates a counterclockwise rotational effect about point O, the moment M O equals to positive F times d. And if the force creates a clockwise effect about point O, the moment M equals to negative F times d. In each case. D is the moment arm, which is the perpendicular distance from point O to the line of action of force F. Or we can just draw a line from point O to anywhere on the line of action of a force F, R1 or R2 or R3, and determine the angle between each of these three lines and the force, theta1, theta2, and theta3, respectively. And the moment can be determined to be f times r1 sine theta1, or f times r2 sine theta2, or f times r3 sine theta3. According to trigonometry, we know that r1 sine theta1 equals to d, so as r2 sine theta2 and r3 sine theta3. Resultant moment caused by multiple forces can be determined by simply adding up the individual moment caused by each force about the same point. Like in this example, the total moment about point O equals to F1 times its moment arm d1 plus F2 times d2 minus F3 times d3. Note that it's minus F3 d3 because F3 is creating a clockwise rotational effect about point O.